Alright guys, such a key again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far with a raft load of leaks of Modern Warfare 3 over the last couple of days. Plenty of reaction from the pros in terms of the direction that they seem to be going down with this upcoming Call of Duty title. Dashi though has a different perspective. He wants either jetpacks back, seems rather unlikely, or the return of slide cancelling, which was a controversial feature pre-Modern Warfare 2, but maybe some pros would prefer it back in the game. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. This is many of us in the Codsy right now waiting for Rostermania to restart again and it's difficult to say exactly what's holding things up. Partly it's the fact that the roster announcements for whatever reason are taking some time with the top teams. We already know what the top teams rosters are likely going to be anyway so I don't think that's a massive deal. As I said last night I think the Pred gets back to the States on like the 25th or something so it's going to be some time until Optic confirm. The question is to me what exactly is holding up things on the other end of teams. We know that London and Vegas they will wait months just so they don't have to pay anyone's salary in the off-season. That's probably part of their strategy. They've done it before. They'll probably do it again. There are some other teams, though, the likes of Surge, the likes of... Okay, they're moving to Vancouver, so there might be a few things to figure out with that, we believe at least. Boston might want to lock down their players quickly. They seem to have the money to spend, but they might not necessarily need to if the other teams aren't moving fast. Thieves don't have the budget to necessarily compete for the real top free agents outside of what we presently have locked into those theoretical top four teams. And then Rocker, they're rumoured to be doing this merger with G2, which is probably holding them up. So there's a few reasons why things are moving slow right now. But give it a few weeks, I'm sure we'll have a greater idea. Now, this is a bit of drama that went down yesterday. So this guy, Aris here, he comes out and says that RC scammed him for $150 and then RC's blocked him on Twitter. So it's like, okay, what's going on here? It wouldn't be the first time that a pro had done something a scummy, but we'll get into the details. So he says that 1 0 up, second map, 5 3. Fool is saying that he got hit off and thought it was the best of five. So this sounds like he's played RCTs in, you know, RC's team in some sort of uh, wager match, and RC's was about to lose, and therefore he was going to win the wager match and win the money, but, and, you know, that didn't happen because RC's got hit off or whatever the case was. I think it turns out, though, because RC's responded to this and said, people are actually saying that I scammed him, I'm losing it. And he went on to clarify that the bet wasn't actually with him. So I'm pretty sure that he'd put a bet on RCT's game so that he wasn't actually playing against RCT's but it was a bet that he put like a side bet on RCT's wager match I think is what happened here and uh, he comes up with a pretty interesting tweet as a result but um and then RCT's like uh, for whatever reason he got hit off or something happens and therefore that bet was not honoured but he wants RCT's to you know gift him however many subs to honour the money that he lost so I don't know what you guys think about this. When I initially saw this, I was like, all right, I'll just wait for Arsatis to actually respond and give his perspective. And uh, this is what Arsatis has said. So I don't know if there's going to be any more follow-up on this, but, you know, drama as usual in the S&D community. I don't think you can ever really get away from it. I will just share one funny tweet here, because, like, Stanley's mum's tweets are so funny that I just had to mention this. Got a follow-back from Ghosty this evening, etc., etc. Not going to lie, would love to see him and Eli, that being Stanley, of course, on a team next year. No, that isn't a roster clue. Ghosty actually likes this tweet. What do you guys think about that potential duo? Of course, like, she doesn't know anything about this. I don't think this is necessarily going to be happening, but it would be interesting, right? Because Ghosty will be a target for some of the teams I just mentioned. Maybe Boston, but certainly potentially a Surge or a Rocker, something like that. We've talked about maybe could Stanley go back there. Stanley is one of the top three or four SMG free agents, I would say, that will be looked at. There's Hook, there's Afro, there's Standy, probably right up there. Then you're looking at, you know, Capsidel, and there's a few others, of course, that go into the mix as well that we've talked about over the last couple of days. Let's talk Modern Warfare 3, though. So this year's game, is it going to be any good? I know a lot of you in the comments below were like, well, optimistic, right? Cautiously optimistic. I feel like we're cautiously optimistic every year at this point. But there is maybe slightly more reason for optimism this year, I will say, than the previous years. Part of it is because they're bringing everything over from Modern Warfare 2. Is this good? Is this bad? I don't know. But um, I would say that it implies that this is going to be a $70 game or whatever they, they charge nowadays for pretty much a reskin of last year's title. Like initially the rumor was that they were working on the second year of Modern Warfare 2 and that was the plan and that they were going to charge like $70 for the map pack pretty much expansion. It seems like that is kind of what we're going to get but it is technically going to be a new game but it's going to be very similar. 
if you guys have seen any of the screenshots floating around, you'll look at the font and you'll look at the design of the UI and you'll think that it was Modern Warfare 2 or even Modern Warfare 19 or even Vanguard. It's very, very similar across all of these and it looks like it's been designed exactly the same way. So all of the bundles that players bought in this year's title are going to carry over, which is pretty good. But what it does mean is that all the weapons that we currently have in Modern Warfare 2 are going to be in this upcoming title as well. And that's pretty interesting. And actually, Call of Duty confirmed this straight up. They say, should the operators, the weapons, the bundles carry forward? And um, they say yes on both counts. So that's going to happen. What does it mean for the meta, right? Because the TAC and the Vaznev are still going to be in next year's game. I don't want another year of TAC and Vaznev. I didn't think the meta was terrible, but I want other weapons to be used. And if they're bringing all the weapons in, you would think that they'd make some major adjustments to the way the weapons perform to ensure that there's some sort of change in the, in the meta. But it's not like the developers really care so much about that, whereas the pros will always use what's best. And I'm sure there'll be new weapons and stuff that come in as well. So hopefully it's not another year of Tak and Vaznev, but it might be because those guns are going to be in the game is our understanding. The other part of this, though, is the maps, because supposedly some of the maps that we had in this year's game are going to be in next year's game as well. That's what Jason Schreier says. Any news on if maps will carry over? Some potentially will. So hopefully some of the decent competitive maps, OK, we didn't have anything fantastic this year, but there were some decent maps. Hotel, maybe they don't want to do that because of the copyright stuff, but eventually they did seemingly get away with it and they could actually play it for the rest of the year, despite early rumours that it was going to be removed from the game after Major 1. So hopefully a couple of the better maps do get carried over, but then you'd also expect way more maps to be arriving and hopefully we get all of the old school Modern Warfare 2 maps into the game as well. Now this comes out from Task Force Leakers 141, who basically say that this game is going to be a combination of Modern Warfare 2 and Call of Duty Vanguard. This maybe isn't a surprise and it will be frustrating to think that two of the worst COD games in recent memory, I mean there's been a lot of bad COD games over the last few years but you know these are certainly two of them have been spliced together to make whatever this is. Now in fairness if they took the best elements of both games you'd actually have a much better version and this is what people are talking about the ninja, the dead silence, some of the mistakes that Infinity Ward have made that Sledgehammer are seemingly not making. So good on them for doing so and there's another one of this actually because they got rid of the reload cancelling this has been a thing for years where if you try and well if you're reloading your weapon at a certain point the gun is actually reloaded but the animation continues you used to be able to sprint and that would cancel the reload or reload cancel by yy or something they removed that feature from this game I guess for realism, right? But I mean, come on. So Sledgehammer was seemingly just undoing everything that IW did wrong, which is good. There's no doubt. What I wonder is what are the maps going to look like? Because the point was, as I mentioned before, for this year's title, we thought it was going to be MW2 2.0 or year two or something. It's now been confirmed we do have a new game, maybe just for the reason because that's easier to sell, right? An actual new game is easier to sell for $70 than a $70 map expansion pack for the original, the same game. And they want the money. Fair enough. That's how they operate. This was the original map set from the original Modern Warfare 2 way back in the day. And we didn't get any of these maps. I mean, it's super frustrating to think about that Modern Warfare 2 arrived and yet you couldn't play on any of these maps. We couldn't use any of them in the competitive rotation. Surely they worked on the remakes for these and they must be available at some point. And you'd think that the second year of a very similar game to what we had last year, even if it's called Modern Warfare 3, would be the time to add these maps in. Now, because it's going to be Modern Warfare 3, maybe you think, well, you know, bring back some of the MW3 maps as well, like Sea Town and some other classics like that. But this was the MW2 variant map set. Back then it was Search and Destroy, CTF and Demolition, and it was High Rise, Invasion, Scrapyard, Terminal, and then Karachi for Search and Destroy. And let's say these maps did arrive, is there a good argument to say that actually we need to change up the third game mode? We've had control for a long time at this point, and I know that a lot of the pros aren't so happy with with control. It's not terrible. I don't mind it personally. It's a reasonable middle ground between the other two modes and it's a pretty good swing modes, but it doesn't play anywhere near as well in this 4v4 era as it did, let's say, in 5v5 specialists. Control was great in Black Ops 4. And if these maps were to be in the game, these will play. We know that these play pretty well for CTF because they did back in the day. So there's an argument that says, well, put CTF in the game. And I think it's been leaked as well that Capture the Flag, the logos for the game mode have been seen in the game. So it probably is in the game, Capture the Flag. So maybe that's, you know, obviously it's a way off at this point, but I'm sure some 
pros will like to see it. So let's just talk about some of the reaction here. Abizi says rumors of Ninja and the classic minimap returning for the next card. He's obviously very happy with that one. But Dashi also gives some thoughts on this as well. TJ's like smiling through it all. Ninja is back. We're running it down next year. But his perspective is he wants a, a different change in direction for the upcoming Call of Duty games. The return of jetpacks, I'm sure many pros would love to see this. And for some time, I thought that it actually might happen. Not now, but in a few years. But the more I think about it, the less I think that they're ever going to go back to jetpacks. Just because I mentioned it before, but whenever you talk to people that are more casual Call of Duty fans, they consider jetpacks to be the death of Call of Duty as they knew it, which I think is probably fair enough. Now, I think Call of Duty would have, let's say they never went to jetpacks. I think COD would have regressed anyway over the coming years with some of the decisions that were being made but nonetheless I think a lot of people look at jetpacks as like yeah well that's kind of where it all went downhill from the days where it was good in Black Ops 2 and MW2 and MW3 and stuff like this and maybe that's fair enough now I love the jetpack games and especially you know Black Ops 3 my favorite COD game ever Advanced Warfare but I think for a lot of us who you know were pretty decent at the games we really enjoyed those games with the big skill gaps personally and ever since the jetpacks have gone away it's been a bit of a regression and you know Dashi and other pros definitely agree with that assessment. So I don't think we're going to go back to that anytime soon. The other piece though is a slide cancel and this is like the movement skill gap. I genuinely have enjoyed the games where there's a skill gap in terms of movement. World War II was one of my least favorite games because the only skill gap was really in positioning. You had to put yourself in a good spot, post them on a head glitch and then you'd be, you know, you'd be good good people. There wasn't really much movement skill gap in that game. The slide cancel did add that and I never really hated the slide cancel. I wasn't a massive fan of it but a game like Cold War, right? Sometimes, you know, someone would take a couple of pot shots at you. Maybe they'd hit you once, maybe they'd miss you. And then you're like, all right, I'm better than this guy. I'm going to slide cancel chal him and beam him off the head glitch. And yeah, there's no better feeling than that in cards. So it would be nice to have that back a little bit, I think. But I also think this year's game with no slide cancel was pretty reasonable as well. Like they tried to get rid of it, Infinity Wards, but we've seen over the last few minutes here that a lot of the, well, Sentinel are trying to undo a lot of the things that Infinity War did with MW2, it seems. And if that's the case, then maybe the site cancel could make a return at some point. So these are what we currently know. Confirmed it's going to be MW3. A lot of the content's going to transfer. The rumor has it the Red Dot, Reload Cancel, Ninja Perk, and the remastered MW2 maps will be in the game. So if this is the case, we're in for a decent year at the very least, I think. Hopefully this is the case. There's some other things as well. That war mode we mentioned, the red color scheme, like the MW2 remastered maps we just looked at, right? And if it's all of them, that'd be really cool. But obviously, the game is called MW3, so you might think that some of the MW3 maps should come back as well. So I think it was always our hope for this game that we'd suffer through year one, and then year two would be all the old school maps come back. We have a much better map set, and it's going to be a much more well, better experience to play and to watch. And it's going to be a different title technically, but we might still get part of that. It's difficult to be too optimistic though, because as Parasite says, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things is the bare minimum, right? A lot of these leaks should just be how it is. And Vanguard had all of that and was still ruined by poor map design and lack of maps in general. Not going to hold my breath, which is fair enough because, you know, Sledgehammer made Vanguards and it still wasn't a good game despite having a lot of the features that we're mentioning as being a positive. But if it's a combination of MW2 and Vanguards with some better throwback maps, I think we could be in for a decent time all right this is the tweet ninja perk is returning in mono warfare 3 and perks reportedly are considered gear like tactical boots helmets etc did y'all ask for this shit i didn't ask for this shit did y'all ask for gear and shit i swear to god today was did you guys do this shit I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see how it. We'll have to see how it pans out. I don't know, dude. Like, at least we got Ninja. Very much on Twitter. Your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.